Tonight, the King 5 investigators exposed a government contractor at Hanford that disregarded evidence that nuclear waste was leaking from an underground tank for nearly a year before investigating it. And it's not just any tank. This is the one that holds the most deadly waste at the entire Hanford site near the Tri-Cities in eastern Washington. King 5 investigator Susanna Frame joins us now with the first report in her series, Hanford's Dirty Secrets. Jane and Dennis, the contractor is Based in Richland, it's called Washington River Protection Solutions, or WRPS. The federal government pays that company a lot of money to keep the public safe from millions of gallons of radioactive waste at Hanford. But we found WRPS looked the other way when faced with scientific evidence that they had a major problem on their hands. You're looking at one of the most scenic stretches of the Columbia River, undammed for 50 miles, a sanctuary for endangered wildlife, spawning salmon, and toxic waste. The country's most dangerous nuclear dump, just 200 miles away from Seattle. Hanford is the most contaminated facility in the United States and one of the top 10 in the world. In 1943, the federal government began producing plutonium at Hanford. The main goal? Fuel the world's first nuclear bomb during World War II. By the 1980s, all plutonium production stopped at the site. But the government left behind a mess. The largest and most complex environmental cleanup effort in the world, with the worst of it sitting underground in massive tanks. For 25 years and counting, the race has been on. Get rid of the lethal junk in the tanks before it leaks all the way to the Columbia. And if anything bad happens out there, Seattle will feel it. Tom Carpenter is executive director of the watchdog group Hanford Challenge, based in Seattle. The Columbia River gets contaminated. It eventually finds its way up here. Uh, if there's an explosion or a fire, then it can c still come up here that way. So it's we're not safe from it. Uh, and we need to keep our eye on what we're being told out there. And last year, the U.S. Department of Energy told us something big. For the first time, one of their double shell tanks was leaking, found during a routine, regularly scheduled inspection of the tank known as AY-102. And they released these photos, radioactive and chemically lethal sludge oozing out of the main tank. The fact that a double shell tank is leaking at the Hanford site is a game changer. A major blow for sure. The double shells were supposed to be the toughest tanks around. The best shot at making sure the most deadly gunk wasn't going anywhere for decades. It contains literally trillions and trillions of lethal doses of radiation in that waste. Remember how the government told us they discovered this major problem during a routine inspection that everyone was caught by surprise last year? We found that's not true. The evidence shows the contractor in charge of the tanks, WRPS, headquartered here in Richland, ignored strong evidence the tank was leaking for nearly a year before doing anything about it. Uh, we knew that we had a severe problem. Mike Geffrey has worked at Hanford for 26 years. In 2011, he responded to an alarm on AY-102. Leak detection equipment sent up signals that Waste was escaping from the tank, leaking into what's called the annulus, the space between the main tank and the outer shell. I mean, we never, we never guessed in a million years that we we're going to have a double shell tank leak. Geffrey and a co-worker checked the equipment and saw this. Those white flakes in the middle of your screen, tiny signs of big trouble. What looked like nuclear waste dried up on the gear. Then, something from that part of the tank they'd never seen before. A reading of radioactive contamination. It was very shocking for us, you know, for both of us. We kind of just kept looking at each other like, wow, that's, that's really hot. At that moment, was there really any doubt in your mind that you had a leak? Oh, no. I knew right then that we, some, yeah, we had a leak, that something was wrong down there. Geffrey reported the findings right away to his bosses, who had a different opinion. The detection equipment, not the tank, must be broken. They just kind of sat there and they just kind of went, well, are you sure that thing's calibrated? <laughs> and, you know, I said, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I'm the one that does the calibrations on it. I'm the one that takes care of it. Of course, I'm sure. WRPS downplayed that first alarm. They reported to government officials that rainwater, not nuclear waste, most likely creeped onto that gear in the annulus. And the radioactive readings? They concluded it was simply leftover or legacy contamination from years ago.
But King 5 found the company's own experts later discounted those explanations in a 400-page report. WRPS wrote the rainwater explanation seems problematic because of the radiation reading. And the legacy contamination theory, they wrote, that area has been contamination-free since 1999. Nothing added up that said this wasn't a problem. And uh, yeah, they, they just chose not to do anything. WRPS wouldn't go on camera, but issued a statement to King saying they didn't ignore anything, that they thoroughly evaluated events in 2011, and that experience gained over decades of tank farm operations led them to believe rainwater, not nuclear waste, was collecting in the annulus of AY 102. If your alarm clock goes off, hey, it's time to go to work. If your alarm goes off for the tank, it's time to apparently wait another year. Marco Kaltofen is a researcher near Boston. He's one of the top environmental radiation experts in the country. He says waiting to investigate signs of a leak is a serious mistake. The worst case, the most dangerous material on the planet makes its way all the way out of that tank. Time is not our friend. This waste actually gets worse as time goes on. It's hot, it's corrosive, it eats through its container. It can't sit there or it's going to be in the Columbia River, and, and there's no other choice. The contractor says they assumed it was rainwater because it had been raining really hard in the Tri-Cities for several days before the alarm sounded. So how much has leaked so far? WRPS tells us up to 520 gallons had escaped last year and that there hasn't been any real or measurable change since then. But we've obtained records uh, written by the Department of Ecology showing that's not true. They report the waste is measurable, that it's grown by 25% from what they recorded in December, and they continue to watch that leak because at this point there's no plan on what to do about it. And you will continue? Yes, on Thursday we're going to have another story. That will focus on, it wasn't just this one red flag, this alarm that was um, kind of downplayed. We're going to show you it was a series of events over about a 10 month period that for some reason, uh, managers just kind of looked the other way. Okay, look forward to it, Susanna, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Susanna. Number one at five, King Five News starts now. Good evening, Governor Jay Inslee and the federal government are both taking action now after a King Five investigation into a Hanford contractor. The investigators exposed the contractor looked the other way for nearly a year as evidence rolled in that for the first time ever, a double shell tank was leaking nuclear waste. Susanna Frame is here with the latest in her series, Hanford's Dirty Secrets. Susanna. All right, two big developments since we started asking tough questions about what is going on at Hanford. We've obtained a copy of a letter written by the top federal official who oversees the Hanford site. He's asking the contractor to conduct a full review of their management and practices in light of King's findings, and he wants the results in by August 1st. In addition, the governor's office is looking into how and why this happened. We are going to uh, uh, be insistent that our federal partners be open and transparent with us to the extent humanly possible. So we are and will be reviewing what happened in this particular circumstance. And coming up tonight on King 5 News at 11, more on our investigation, Hanford Dirty Secrets. We'll show you the biggest red flags of all, warnings not taken seriously by the contractor that this tank was leaking. Tonight we take a look at the biggest red flags that popped up while the company looked the other way. And we'll see how tense the situation got as one worker pushed his bosses to pay attention to those warnings. King Five Susanna Frame is here with more on her investigation, Hanford's Dirty Secrets. Well, Dennis and Lori, we've heard about other leaking tanks, so why is this one so important? This tank is holding waste that is so toxic that if it were to eat through its outer shell and reach the nearby Columbia River, it would contaminate irrigation water, crops, salmon, our food chain, not for months, but for hundreds of years to come. This is one spot at Hanford the public is never allowed to go. Underfoot, the most hazardous material on Earth is brewing inside a million-gallon double-shell tank. This tank is, a, is holding the nastiest of nasty stuff at Hanford. A year and a half ago, Mike Geffrey, who works for a Hanford contractor, saw what no one expected, evidence that tank was leaking. If so, it would be the first double-shell tank to ever leak at the site. I knew it was serious because that's 
what my career has been for the last 25 years, is to monitor these tanks, to check for leaks. I mean, that's been what I've done. Geffrey reported his findings to the top company guy in the field right away, WRPS manager Dave Strasser, who argued this wasn't serious, that rainwater, not nuclear waste, must have creeped into the space between the tank's inner and outer shells. It was kind of just, we don't want to deal with it, Mike, you know, just let it go. Shut up. Just shut up, just let it go. Yeah, just don't worry about it. But Geffrey did worry about it as warning after warning rolled in. A leak detection alarm went off. A few weeks later, an air monitor spiked to the highest reading of radioactivity ever seen by current employees. Five months after that, equipment got stuck to the tank floor, an indicator it was glued to sticky waste. I complained a lot about it. You know, I made a lot of statements of what, what are we going to do? After all that, the employees here at Hanford came across the biggest red flag of all, something the experts say should have sent their managers scrambling to find answers. A broken wire, similar to this one behind the glass, was pulled out of the space between the shells. It gave off an extremely hot radiation reading, one that shocked the workers, but not the managers. They didn't call for more investigation. Instead, they kept to their rainwater theory. It's hard to believe that you could get this much advanced warning of a problem and not deal with it. Marco Kaltofen is a top radiation expert located in Massachusetts. He's been to Hanford many times. I really don't know what it's going to take. What is it going to take to get you to wake up and start dealing with a problem? Because problems do not fix themselves, and they definitely don't fix themselves in Hanford. WRPS, the contractor hired by the feds to take care of all the tanks at Hanford, denied repeated requests for an on-camera interview, but they told us their experts disagree. They said contamination readings were well below what would have been expected from tank waste and that the alleged red flags were investigated and determined unlikely to be caused by a leak. Months went by. Yeah. And what happened? Well, nothing. Geffrey says his WRPS bosses told him to conduct business as usual, but that didn't happen. Yeah, I'd come home and be just frustrated and grumpy, couldn't sleep at nights. He even considered ditching his long and successful career. They took the fun out of it. This company took the fun out of my job. Just was just didn't enjoy it anymore. You know, it's hard to go to work and to fight so hard to do the right thing. But Geffrey stayed on the job and was there to see this. Photos of not rainwater, but nuclear sludge oozing into the space. The pictures were taken during a routine inspection nearly a year after managers dismissed his first warnings. What I was doing was right, you know. And it validated that um, I was doing the right thing by calibrating the stuff and sticking with it and that it actually worked and it detected the leak and, and there was a leak there. One of the reasons this whistleblower, Mike Geffrey, is so emotional is because he understands what's at stake, that it's a race against time. Do something about that leaking tank before the sludge makes its way into the groundwater and the Columbia River. So waiting, he believes, put them a year behind trying mm -hmm. to work on a solution. Taxpayers paid nearly $400 million to a Hanford contractor last year for managing all of the underground storage tanks holding nuclear waste at the site. But as the money rolled in, so did unheeded warning signs for nearly a year that the tank holding the worst waste of all was leaking. In her continuing investigation, Hanford's Dirty Secrets, Susanna Frame asks if bonus money trumps safety at the former plutonium production facility. As one warning after another cropped up indicating radioactive sludge could be escaping from a double shell tank at Hanford, big signs like contamination readings and leak detection alarms going off, managers at the site said not to worry, that rainwater, not nuclear waste, must be setting off false alarms. If those people even thought that there was a possibility that this was a leak, they should not be in their jobs anymore. King 5 has uncovered another troubling event on the job site. It happened a few weeks after the first leak alarm went off. The contractor in charge of the tanks, WRPS, directed an employee to zero reset or reprogram the leak detection system. 
The change meant the equipment stopped sensing the gunk already piled up at the bottom of the tank, in essence, making the problem appear to go away. It smells like a cover-up to me. State Representative Jerry Paulette is the legislature's leading expert on Hanford. That's where it begins to look and smell like a very deliberate cover-up rather than ignorance. Reporting leaks in high-level waste tanks has been frowned upon at this site for decades. Yeah. Bob Alvarez is a former senior nuclear policy advisor under President Clinton. At Hanford, he says, there's an incentive to ignore or cover up problems. It's that bonus money is on the line. Why are these contractors doing what they're doing? It's all purely economically motivated, of course. Alvarez traveled the world, including North Korea and Hanford, working on nuclear safety issues for the U.S. Department of Energy, headquartered here in Washington, D.C. That's the way it is. He's seen okay. firsthand the government's payment system he believes is at the root of the problem. Where uh, rewards are given for only presenting good news and not bad news. Then you have these problems. It's just that simple. Here's how it works. The government doles out rewards, bonus money, when contractors complete specific jobs like moving waste out of certain tanks. Experts say looking for and reporting something devastating like a leaking tank could be a showstopper, bringing extra work and questions that might get in the way of collecting the cash. It boils down to making money. And it boils down to making money in a way where there's the least amount of hassle to do it. And a leaking tank is a hassle. It is a big time hassle because then it requires you to change your priorities. And maybe losing money. And maybe losing bonus. money and possibly losing a contract. WRPS refuses to grant an on-camera interview with the company president, Mike Johnson, but they told King that science dictated their decisions and that their science pointed to rainwater and old contamination, not toxic goop, had made its way into the space between the two walls of the tank. And you at least have an obligation to treat it like a leak and investigate it and prove otherwise instead of ignoring it. They ignored it. During the year WRPS disregarded signs of trouble, the company celebrated a banner one in the bonus department. Mike Johnson wrote to employees there, Outstanding effort led to the feds awarding them more than $23 million that year, one of their biggest bonuses ever. If we had a coffee cup of waste from that tank sitting here between us since we started this interview, we'd both be dead now. Experts say the waste at Hanford, especially what's inside the leaking double shell tank, is so harmful the government needs to change its strategy. It should encourage, not discourage, facing challenges head on. You would think that the system would reward people to, um, to be reporting problems, to be proactive. At stake, if that lethal waste eats its way through its outer shell, it's headed toward the Pacific Northwest's largest river, contaminating the environment, the food chain, people, for generations to come. We're really talking about protecting one of the nation's largest freshwater streams, the Columbia River. This is really what the bottom line is. And that's a national issue. That's an issue of national importance. We asked the company, WRPS, if the pressure to make their bonus money had any bearing at all on their decision with that tank. Today, they sent us a response that says, after they found evidence of the leak, they had all the resources they needed to attend to that and to finish their bonus making projects. Of course, we also wanted to hear from their bosses, the U.S. Department of Energy on this topic. We wanted to ask them, you know, do you have any incentives for your contractors to report problems? But so far, they haven't answered any of those questions. If a fire alarm goes off at your office or school, there's most likely a plan for what to do next. But that wasn't the case when a serious alarm sounded at Hanford a year and a half ago. In her continuing investigation, Hanford's Dirty Secrets, King 5 Susanna Frame reports that a government contractor had no plan in place when an alarm went off, signaling a double shell tank was leaking nuclear waste. With human and environmental health on the line, nobody shoots from the hip at Hanford. Written procedures dictate everything. What protective gear to wear, when and where to put it on, how to calibrate every instrument. 
and some of the most important ones are called alarm response procedures, or ARPs. When an alarm bell goes off, that's the go-to Bible. We have alarm response procedures for everything out there. As it turns out, not everything. Check out this logbook obtained by King. On October 9th, 2011, a shift manager wrote the double shell tank called AY-102 sent an alarm that it was leaking, but he didn't know what to do. He was unable to find an ARP. After that, managers for the government contractor, WRPS, sent their employee Mike Geffrey out to check the detector. I thought there would be a whole protocol of investigating, looking to figure out what's going on, maybe sticking cameras in and looking to see where the waste was coming from. I just assumed that was in place. Well, there wasn't any of that in place. There was nothing. No plan. No plan. Zippo. WRPS officials disagree with King 5. They sent us a statement saying there is and has been an established alarm response procedure, ARP, for this leak detection system. We checked. We looked at all of the ARPs connected with double shell tanks at Hanford. They've got one for high pressure, power supply failure, tank level alarms, and more. But nothing, not one ARP for alarms showing nuclear waste might be leaking from a primary tank. To me, they failed. You know, that company failed. We showed the company response to former Ecology Department worker Dick Hagen that there is and has been an alarm response plan. But did they give you the actual procedure? No, because it doesn't exist. They lied to you then. For nine years, it was Hagen's job to make sure contractors followed state regulations at Hanford. They need to, right now, figure out a plan to deal with this in case it gets bigger or something else leaks. Somebody decided not to have a procedure in place because they simply believed it would never happen, they'd never have to address it. That was a big mistake. Why was this such a big mistake? Without a plan, a roadmap to investigate what exactly set off the alarm, the company simply reported to the government that rainwater most likely got into the space and left it at that. The assumption was wrong. It wasn't water, but nuclear waste leaking out of the primary tank. The first time this had ever happened at Hanford. If you are alarming that, if you're testing that, if you're monitoring, and you don't have a plan for when you find something, why are we out there in the first place? Everybody go home. Forget the whole thing. With no procedures in place, warnings of a leak rolled in as waste rolled out for nearly a year. A year of not working on a solution. And Hanford experts tell us this leaking tank in particular needs a solution quickly. It's loaded with massive amounts of a nuclear byproduct called strontium-90. Strontium-90 is so nasty, it creates thermal heat at the bottom of the tank so hot, it boils the waste around it. A concoction that would eat through the tank's outer shell faster than any other material at Hanford. And that's the final barrier between the toxic sludge and the environment. And it's been known for 50, over 50 years at Hanford that high heat loads at the bottom of tanks cause them to leak and crack. This is not unknown. They've wasted money, they've wasted time. We can't afford to do those things out at Hanford. It's too urgent of a problem. All of us have way too much invested in that cleanup to succeed for that kind of mentality to prevail. So today, a WRPS executive told us he needed to clarify their statement that they didn't actually need an alarm response procedure, an ARP, because they had other plans that covered it. In fact, the company didn't have proper plans in place at the time, and they still don't. And this is important because this is not the only double shell tank at Hanford. That company is in charge of 27 others filled with the worst waste out there. And our experts are telling us that because of that, they need an actual ARP on the books in a hurry in case it happens again. Tonight, the King 5 investigators exposed that Hanford executives misled public officials and citizens alike about leaking nuclear waste for several months last year. In her continuing investigation, Hanford's Dirty Secrets, Susanna Frame reveals the danger of an important tank at the site was concealed during meetings for the public and policymakers. With all the uncertainties at Hanford, what's buried below this dirt was supposed to be the one slam dunk. 28 sturdy double shell tanks. If all else failed, at least these would protect the Columbia River, the food chain, and people from the worst of the worst on the planet. 
With two steel walls, not one, like the older tanks, the added safety barrier would contain that nuclear waste until scientists figured out a way to get rid of it for good. But that plan fell apart. The failure of a double shell tank is big, big news. The citizen watchdog group Hanford Challenge shocked the public last summer with information from a Hanford insider. The press release read, first double shell tank leaks at Hanford. A massive blow to the entire cleanup operation. And the reason is that uh, we are relying on these tanks to operate safely for 40, 50 years through the rest of the cleanup. Now the public wanted to know what's going on. The board members and alternates, if you... Especially the 32 members of the Hanford Advisory Board, citizens, government officials, and scientists. Secondly, another suggestion is... It's their job to give sound advice to the feds and the state of Washington on how to solve problems at the site. But it seems like I'm getting quite mixed messages. The board had questions, and Tom Fletcher, a U.S. Department of Energy Hanford manager, was supposed to be the man with the answers. At a board meeting last September, Fletcher brought photos of mysterious material that had made its way into that safety space between the two walls of the tank known as AY-102. But Fletcher told the policy advisors he didn't know what it was yet. They were saying, well, don't jump to conclusions, it's just a possible leak. Meredith Crafton and Tom Carpenter of Hanford Challenge both attended the September meeting. The overall um, presentation was, was, we're looking, but we don't see any evidence yet. Don't worry. Don't worry. Representative Jerry Paulette was there as well. And their answer was, we're investigating it, but we think that it's likely that it's rainwater. Here's an audio recording of a portion of Fletcher's presentation. It could be a carbonate buildup. Yes. Uh, and and, that's, what, and that's, that's a possibility. It's just, like I said, we've, we've seen a lot of different things, and they just don't point to any one thing, and that's why I'm really hard to speculate what it is. We haven't got to a point that says, hey, we know what it is. We have no, there is a, a history of, what rainwater leakage in this tank annulus? We found those explanations don't add up. A month before that meeting, with all the speculation of rainwater, a tiny piece of duct tape, something similar to this, told a different story. This is duct tape employees from the government contractor in charge of the tanks, WRPS, lowered into the safety space of AY-102 to grab a sample of whatever was down there. And boy, did that tape deliver. Internal emails obtained by King 5 show that on August 13th, weeks before the board briefing, the lab reported to company execs what they'd found. Flakes of rust, old paint, and something else. Some of the most dangerous nuclear byproducts known to man, strontium-90, plutonium, cesium-137, and more. The exact components of AY-102's primary tank. After they analyzed the duct tape, should there have been a lingering question is the tank leaking or not? Via Skype, we shared the findings with our radiation expert, Marco Kaltofen of Boston. I don't know what they're waiting for. Did they need a fax from the president saying, OK, this is a leak? It was time. All the information was there to make the right decision. Enough was on that tape. Absolutely. The tape held one more important clue. It was screaming hot with radioactivity. And remember, the sample came from the safety space that shouldn't record any contamination at all. That's a huge number. You actually have to go out and look hard for equipment that can measure radiation that's that high. You had all the information you needed, you knew you had a leak, and now it was just time to, to fess up, face the music. We wanted to ask WRPS President Mike Johnson about that and more. He repeatedly denied a request for an on-camera interview. Hi, Mr. Johnson. I'm Susanna Frame from King TV. We've talked on the phone before. We're here to talk about tank AY-102. Can you tell us why the public was misled for several months last year? We caught up with Johnson outside the WRPS offices in Richland. I think we have some important questions that our viewers deserve to have answered. Johnson didn't answer our questions, but members of the Hanford Advisory Board did when we told them about the tape and lab results dated in August, a month before their briefing. If they're going to say, it just dismiss the evidence, the obvious evidence in front of them and not even tell us about that evidence, uh, then how can we rely on them for anything? And I think it can put the public at risk and workers at risk when they're not forthcoming with information, also meaning they're not forthcoming with responding to issues and respond in creating solutions. This was a very deliberate cover-up, and I will use the word that we were lied to. There's no two ways about it. We were lied to. 
Now, it wasn't just WRPS President Mike Johnson who wouldn't answer our questions about this issue. The Department of Energy, which put on the presentation for that advisory board, wouldn't answer any questions about the tape, the lab results, and the delay in telling the public what was really going on. And one of the reasons the advisory board members are so upset about this when we showed them the evidence is that they said that they need real-time, up-to-date information because it's their job to give mm -hmm. advice. I mean, the government agencies are mandated to take advice from this great, you know, scientific panel, and it um, just didn't work out that way. Number one in Western Washington, King 5 News at 5. A big shakeup at the Hanford nuclear facility in eastern Washington. The president of one of the federal government's main contractors there has abruptly announced he's retiring. The change comes after a series of reports by King 5 investigator Susanna Frame called Hanford's Dirty Secrets. She has more on this latest development. Hi, Mr. Johnson. I'm Susanna Frame from King TV. We talked on the phone before. We're here to talk about tank AY-102. After 42 years in the nuclear field, the last few months have been rough ones for Mike Johnson. In April, King 5 began a series of reports exposing that the company he runs failed miserably in handling a crisis. The first ever leak of a double shell tank at Hanford. Their mismanagement included ignoring strong evidence the tank was broken and leaking the most dangerous waste at the site for nearly a year. Really just a few minutes of your time. Johnson never answered any of our questions, but he is talking to his employees with this email announcing out of the blue that he's retiring. It is with mixed emotions, Johnson wrote, that I inform you I will retire from my position as president of WRPS effective June 30th. I don't trust the system anymore. WRPS worker Mike Geffrey is the whistleblower That's who first came forward about the tank known as AY-102. From his home in eastern Washington, he responded to Johnson's exit by saying, It's time for a change in leadership. They had a chance to do the right thing with AY-102, and they blew it. That was bad, shoddy work. And if that's the type of work he's willing to accept, then it's time to go. The president, Mike Johnson, didn't give a reason for his departure in that email to his employees. I did talk to him on the phone just a few hours ago, and he said he didn't want to comment on why he was leaving the company. But a WRPS spokesperson emailed me right after that to say that Johnson's plans are not connected to our reporting. Uh, Mr. Johnson was at the helm of WRPS for just 14 months before calling it quits. Tonight, the Washington State Department of Ecology speaks out for the first time on revelations from our continuing series, Hanford's Dirty Secrets. The director of the state agency is angry. They learned key issues about a nuclear waste tank, not from their federal partners in the cleanup project, but by watching King 5 News. And as Susanna Frame reports, the state is demanding action or a lawsuit against the federal government. This is Hanford's B reactor, the first place in the world to produce plutonium for a nuclear bomb, right here in Washington state. It's an iconic symbol of decades of federal government secrecy. No one, not even the workers who built it, knew what was really going on at Hanford for nearly 50 years. At that point, the waste is introduced to heat and glass making materials. Now that's all changed. The public can even take a bus tour of the site. In the late 80s, plutonium production ended with the Cold War. as the mission switched to demolition and cleanup, cleaning up millions of gallons of nuclear waste the federal government left behind. We should be working together as partners to do the right thing by the people of the state of Washington to get this cleanup moving. With Hanford no longer a classified secret, the state of Washington came into the picture with the Department of Ecology, by law, given oversight and enforcement authority over the Fed's cleanup operation. This is very serious. Ecology Director yes. Maya Bellin says the state needs real-time information on issues at Hanford, such as nuclear waste leaking for the first time ever from a giant double-shell tank known as AY-102, holding some of Hanford's worst radioactive waste. And my full expectation from the federal government is that we receive information in a timely fashion and that it's transparent. But that's not what happened last year when the federal government hid key evidence of the leaking tank from a Hanford advisory panel. And now we've found 
even from officials at the Washington State Department of Ecology. In August, duct tape was used to pull samples of material spotted just outside of the tank's main wall. State officials repeatedly asked the feds to see the results. That never happened. But King 5 found the tape was loaded with nuclear byproducts, strontium-90, plutonium, and cesium-137, the exact components of what's inside the main tank. Let me be very clear. The timeliness and how this has been responded to is unacceptable to the state of Washington. A month after the tape results came in, a federal Hanford manager, Tom Fletcher, told state officials it was unclear what was going on with the tank. He added that the camera used to take these photos of whatever was down there came out of the space radiation and contamination free. Here's audio of him at a meeting with state ecology officials present. Camera equipment has been removed in all cases for all the, all the risers we've been in without incident. Um, and when I say without incident, that's no contamination on the equipment itself, so we're not seeing any airborne contamination flying, or flying around as we're doing this. Here's what Fletcher didn't say. Those cameras are never contaminated. A protective yellow sleeve like this makes sure the gear stays clean so it can be used again. Do you feel as though they lied to you? I, my staff are still looking into that information. Um, I definitely am disturbed about the delay in the timing of getting that information. And, um, and that is concerning. Now the state is demanding an action plan to make sure the toxic sludge doesn't make it into the environment. Federal regulations state if there's a leak, the tank must be removed from service immediately and that the waste should be pumped within 24 hours after the detection. King 5 has shown it's been more than a year and a half since the first signs of the leak, and to date, there's not even a plan of what to do. I believe that the federal government has not just a legal, but a moral obligation to clean up the Hanford site. Our state has inherited legacy waste um, that is very um, critical, and we um, are owed, the people of the state of Washington, a cleanup that's expeditious and that is safe.
Number one at five, King 5 News starts now. Good evening. New concerns at Hanford. The nuclear plant's most toxic tank may be in worse condition than anyone imagined. Now workers have found evidence the tank could be leaking into the soil. Our team has been covering Hanford's dirty secrets extensively. And tonight, Gary Chittum has a reaction from Olympia on this latest development. But we begin with King 5 investigator Susanna Frame, who broke the news on this latest leak. Managers at Hanford are facing one of their biggest challenges ever right now. It appears the most dangerous material on earth is out of its tank and out of their control, and there's no immediate plan on how to solve the problem. We're talking about the tank known as AY-102. A year ago, the public found out the tank was leaking toxic sludge through its primary shell into a hollow safety space. But now it appears the worst case scenario has happened. The waste has eaten through the outer tank wall and made its way over through piping to what's called a leak detection pit. Experts tell us if it's crawled all the way over there, it's also seeping into the ground. Well, certainly, obviously, I'm aware of the of the AY-102 um, uh, situation, uh, watching it carefully. Just two days ago, Secretary of Energy Ernest Moniz visited Hanford and told reporters tank AY-102 was in check. The next visual inspection a couple days ago uh, showed no, no further uh, indication of leak. And of course, I should say, uh, everything is contained right now in the, in the, in the annulus, uh, and there, there are no pumpable liquids at the moment. These are the latest pictures of the nuclear waste obtained by King 5 this week. They show that, in fact, the volume of material has increased, but no one expected this. We've gotten a hold of internal Hanford documents that show a crew working on the leak detection pit pulled a piece of equipment from it and measured a whopping contamination reading, 800,000 dpm, or disintegrations per minute. That's a significant amount of radioactive contamination where none, not a drop, should be seen. So now I'm joining you live from San Antonio, Texas, where I actually had come to uh, take part in a journalism conference when this story broke. And we do want to tell you why is this so worrisome that this specific tank is leaking? I have to be honest, it is the absolute worst waste in all of Hanford right there in that tank. It's the most radioactive. It's the most chemically contaminated. So if there's one tank that you don't want to leak into the ground, into the groundwater, and certainly the Columbia River, it would be this tank. And to recap, in our series, Hanford's Dirty Secrets, which we've been uh, running over the last several months, we've exposed that the company in charge of all these tanks ignored signs of this leak for about a year before doing anything about it. So what's happened now is a prime example of why you just cannot wait, you can't uh, dawdle when you're talking about nuclear waste at Hanford. I'm Susanna Frame reporting live in San Antonio, Texas.